There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Miniac. Welcome back to my channel. I am delighted to bring to you today the Read Doris tag. Why? Because today, March 18th, 2020, is Doris's 50th birthday. If you don't know who Doris is, where the hell have you been? Doris is the wonderful woman between the Booktube channel All the Books, and she is a much beloved, I was going to say fixture, but that's not fabulous enough of a noun. She's just a beloved personage persona on booktube and we are celebrating her special day with this read doris tag an original tag created by britta bowler and myself and you should be seeing quite a few other iterations of this tag going live at the same time as this video and we're all going to tag a bunch of yous and if i forget at the end even if you're not tagged you should do this tag video of course and you don't need to know doris but your life would be enhanced greatly if you got to know Doris to do the tag. What are you doing, guy? Huh? Pico! Pico de gallo! Don't sniff his butt. I don't know what just happened, but let's just move on, shall we? Prompt number one. D is for Doris, a book written by and or about a Doris. So the first one I have for you is a wonderful German novel of the Weimar era. Ermgard coins The Artificial Silk Girl, which I read late last year. I will put a link into my review, and I know that Doris has read this novel uh, since then, and she quite liked it as well. It is translated from the German by Kathy von Ankum, and the protagonist is a lovable, scatterbrained, brilliant, kind-hearted, sexy young woman who's a bit lost but lights up everyone's lives who reads about her a wonderful book about a wonderful doris also i don't have a copy so here's the gif for the cover team of rivals by doris kearns goodwin which is a biography of abraham lincoln but also of his cabinet and his relationships with the members of his cabinet that he had been intensely rival intensely rivalrous and competitive with before he became president and he brought them all into his cabinet it is one of the i would say it is the best work of popular history i have ever read it just consumed me when i read it about a dozen years ago and no answer to this prompt is complete without reference to booktube's own charles heathcote who has a series of books about a lovable middle-aged late middle-aged i'm not sure a protagonist named doris I haven't read any of them, but I have the first one. I read the first sentence when I hauled it, and it just made me want to keep reading. The first sentence is, Our Doris has developed an unhealthy obsession with slugs. I think Doris of Aldi Books has read this, haven't you? And Doris Lessing, of course. I have not read anything by Doris Lessing, and I have chosen a couple books by her, one that I am planning to read for my little read doris -a -thon that I'm planning to do to celebrate Doris's birthday. I will get to that at the end of this video. And that is a collection of Doris Lessing's essays called Prisons We Choose to Live Inside. Most of Doris Lessing's novels are quite chunky, so I didn't want to try and fit one of those in this month, but I did want to do something by Doris Lessing, and I have chosen this quite short collection of her essays. And then I also want to mention another Doris Lessing book because it couldn't be more of a Doris from Aldi Books book than a book by Doris Lessing about cats. Doris, are you sitting down? Maybe you know about it. Knowing you, you've already read it. But it's called On Cats. And it's on Scribd, as is the collection of essays which I will be reading. It's, it's a memoir about the cats in her life. And it's also very short. Any of you that have Scribd and or want to read it to celebrate our Doris's, not the Charles Heathcote, our Doris, but Booktube's Doris's birthday, it's about 250 pages. Look at that cover, hey? I don't know where that's coming from, but almost feels like she's here in the room with me. Next, number two, O is for Outside Your Comfort Zone, and Brit and I came up with this prompt because Doris is famous for reading Outside Her Comfort Zone. 
She's always challenging herself to read about a country she doesn't know much about or to read something that's really personally challenging to her. It's one of the things that I love about her reading life most. So, a book you've read or want to read that is, well, outside your comfort zone. And so I have chosen a book that I've had on my shelf, on read. It's been beckoning to me since I first acquired it, and I am finally ready to read it this year. Maybe for my read Dorisathon, but uh, it's pretty chunky. And that is Clearing the Plains. The subtitle is Disease, Politics of Starvation, and the Loss of Aboriginal Life by the historian James Dashick. And it is about exactly that. How the plains of Saskatchewan and Western Canada were cleared of the indigenous population in a genocidal manner to make room for my ancestors the settlers, the homesteaders that came from eastern Canada and from around the world to farm the area that had been inhabited just a few years earlier by indigenous peoples. And it's a harrowing tale, and I've read reviews of it that have almost made me burst into tears, and I just haven't been ready to read it. And given all the indigenous activist ferment in Canada right now, which I am 200% behind, I'm ready. Number three... R is for recommended, a book, topic, or theme Doris featured on her channel that intrigued you. Tell us all about it and the book or books you've read or want to read, thanks to Doris. Doris is always giving me reading ideas, and I think I've followed through on a lot of them, but the one that I will highlight today is she sold me a lot of booktubers, but especially Doris sold me on this graphic novel, Good Talk by Myra Jacob, which just came in the mail a couple days ago. And it is a graphic memoir about a biracial family or about biracial identity in America. Myra Jacob is the author of the non-graphic novel, The Sleepwalker's Guide to Dancing. And Doris put this on my radar. Thanks, Doris. <laughs> where is that coming from? Oh, my goodness. Right, where are we? I've lost my train of thought. Uh... Number four, I is for Indeed. She's crazy about cats and bees and dot, dot, dot. A book about cats or bees or any other animal or notably featuring them in the story and or on the cover. If you know Doris and her channel, she is crazy about the aforementioned non-humans and her vlogs are full of feline fabulousness. So I want to tell you about a book. I'm not a cat person at all. I'm not a pet person. I'm not really an animal person. But dogs are okay. Cats, not my favorite things. But I want to tell you that I read a novel from Japan called The Guest Cat by Takashi Hiraide, translated by Eric Sealand. I bought it as a gift for my cat-loving niece for Christmas, and I read it. It was so short, like 100 pages or 150 pages before I gave it to her. It was almost like a re-gift, and I was surprised that I really liked it. And it's about a young Japanese couple that play with the cat next door. It's not theirs. And that cat walks in and out of their house over the course of several months, and they grow really attached to it, and all kinds of drama ensues. As a non-cat person and a non-pet person, I'm here to say it was a fantastic novel or novella. I'm assuming Doris has read it. And I've been snooping around in Doris's booktube archives over the last few days, and I saw that she read a book with bees on the cover that I had known about and forgotten about that I now want to give a try. At the Mouth of the River of Bees, stories by Kidge Johnson. Kids, what kind of name is that? So she seemed to be enjoying it in the vlogs of hers back in, you know, the mid-1950s when she started her channel. <laughs> Um, it's got a beautiful cover, hey? So, uh, yeah, let's see if there's anything more to it than that. <laughs> so cute. Thank you. <laughs> and the final prompt, prompt number five, is S is for skyrocket. If you haven't been paying attention, the five prompts spell the word Doris. So S is for skyrocket, a book you think Doris might like and that you want her to read. Let's get that Tower of Doom up into the stratosphere, shall we? 
So I would like to recommend, Doris, that you try some novels if you've never read them, and I wouldn't be surprised if you've never heard of this Canadian novelist. Her name is Margaret Lawrence, and she wrote novels in the 60s and 70s into maybe the early 80s when she died quite young of cancer in her 50s. I read one of them when I was in high school or just out of high school, and I read a collection of her short stories as an undergrad, and I've never gotten back to finish the rest of her oeuvre, and I think that she would be a Doris writer, one of the major writers of Can Lit. She was 60 when she died in 1987. She did write some fiction and nonfiction set in Africa where she lived with her husband in her early middle age, but most of her most famous novels are set in her home province of Manitoba, Canada. And several of them were referred to, I believe, as the Manawaka novels. There was five in the series. And I have read The Stone Angel. Doris, I think they might be up your alley. And if you ever want to buddy read one of them, let me know. But no pressure. I would also like to recommend to you, Doris, this memoir, An African in Greenland, by Tete Michel Pomassi, translated from the French by James Kirkup. And I'm not much of a memoir reader, but this was unforgettable. I absolutely loved it. And it's a story about an African man from Togo who is browsing in a thrift shop in Togo and finds a book about Greenland and it fires his imagination. It takes him two years to get his ducks in a row to go visit Greenland for a year. And this is that story. It's fascinating. You will love it if you haven't already read it. And also, I'm picking kind of obscure titles because Doris is so well read. So this one, I've also talked about a few times on my channel. This is a novel from Saudi Arabia, The Belt by Ahmed Abodeman. And he wrote it in French. He is a Saudi Arabian journalist in Paris and has been living there for decades. Translated from the French by Nadia Benabid. And Doris, you like nice books, so you must track down the version from Saki Books because it's just a beautiful book with heavy paper and there's other editions you could get, but you need this one. And it's the story. It's, it's actually a novel. I keep forgetting it's a novel because it's maybe very autobiographical. And it's about a young boy growing up in a small Saudi village in a traditional tribal culture. And it has some profoundly feminist or very shockingly progressive moments and interludes in it. What stereotypes you have about what it might be like to grow up in Saudi Arabia 50 or 60 years ago, this book will challenge you, it will make you laugh, and it will burst open your heart. Doris, I think you'd really enjoy it. <laughs> What was that sound? Oh my God, I'm getting scared. Two more things I want to say. Many of you probably don't watch my outro video because, you know, after the first 75 times, it gets pretty old. You, you might want to watch it this time. And then finally, the bonus challenge here is to create a TBR of some or all of the books that you mentioned in this tag that you haven't already read to celebrate Doris's birthday that way. Read your heart out. All right, so all I have left to do is tag some people. I'm going to start my list of people that I want to tag with people that I know are followers of Doris's channel, and I'm going to end up with people that I'm not aware whether they follow Doris or not, and they would love Doris if they choose to follow. So remember, you don't really have to know Doris to do this tag, and, you know, if you don't know her and you have to recommend books that she would like, just take a wild guess and, you know, check out a couple of videos to see if there's anything that she has talked about that you would be interested in. So, I tag Cousin of Always Doing, Charlotte of Tired Mama Tries to Read, Alba of Cyriella, Shani of PA Storytime, is that how we say it? Pa? pa PA Storytime? Sorry, I don't know if I've heard you say that, your new channel name. Lindsay of Lindsay's Book Life, Charles Heathcote, uh, author of Our Doris, I think you might have a thing or two to save in this tag, Leo of A Little Book Life, Sonia of An Enthusiastic Reader, Hannah of Hannah's Books, Tia of Tia and All the Books, Marie of MH Books, and then these people, I don't know if they're followers of Doris or not, but they would love her channel if they choose to look into it, Roz of Scally Dandling About the Books, Samuel of Samuel's Book Reviews, Stella at 30 Books, and Christy of Dostoevsky in Space. Happy birthday, Doris! Here is your special audio-enhanced outro. Thanks for watching. Hey!